Hi, I'm Frank Hilde. I work for TriStar Plastics Corporation. I'm Director of Technology and we are uh, going to be discussing perylene today. Uh, and uh, perylene is a vapor deposited plastic in the most general term. Um, vapor deposited and it's fully conformal to any surface uh, that is uh, introduced into the chamber. The general properties of the, of the polymer is, is quite extraordinary. Uh, it is uh, pinhole free, uh, hydrophobic, lubricious, and fully conformal. Uh, and, and it has good temperature resistance uh, as well as uh, its USB class 6 uh, and 501K compatible. Uh, so essentially what this means is that we can use, we can actually coat any material with the perylene uh, to make it implantable or completely inert and resistant to any solvents or uh, environmental conditions. Uh, it's very important for certain circuit board materials and uh, implantable devices and uh, 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 parts that are in very corrosive environments. Uh, it can be extended into uh, elastomers as well. Uh, the materials don't necessarily have to be a pure solid. They can actually have some elasticity to them. Uh, there are three different types that are mainly used. Uh, the most common type is perylene N, which is full hydrocarbon. Uh, it has a, a basis of, of uh, uh, properties, but it, it is mainly used for lubric lubricious applications. Uh, if there is an O-ring condition or uh, a metal slide condition, uh, usually perylene N is used. Uh, the next one is perylene C. Perylene C has a chlorine addition, and when they add the chlorine to the perylene backbone, it gives it uh, higher uh, chemical resistance. Uh, so that it has a, a certain temperature resistance as well as elasticity. Uh, they further uh, added uh, another chlorine to uh, the perylene, and we got perylene D. Not normally used. It's very rare that somebody would actually ask for perylene D. Most people ask for perylene N and C. Uh, the fourth variety is perylene HT. Uh, this is a fully fluorinated perylene uh, compound. Uh, so they swap out the hydrocarbon with fluorocarbon. Uh, it's very expensive and difficult to adhere to any surfaces. So it's all really used in very specific applications where it's needed uh, a full fluorinated version. The coating process is actually quite simple. Uh, the perylene products are, perylene uh, precursors are sold as a solid crystal. Uh, and uh, the solid crystal is placed into a vaporizer. Uh, the perylene precursor never becomes a liquid. It actually sublimes from solid to vapor. And uh, when it's depositing on a material, it goes from vapor to solid. So there is no dripping, there is no pooling. It's fully conformal and gets into every nook and cranny uh, of that device. So it goes from the vaporizer into the pyrolysis zone the vaporizers are typically about 200 C. The pyrolysis zone is at 700 C in general. And when the vapor hits the pyrolysis zone, it cracks the dimer. Then it becomes activated and begins to polymerize into the plastic that is known as the perylene plastic. The properties of the, some common perylenes, N, C, and D, are listed here, and each have their own specific property. Uh, most people will choose perylene C. It's a very fast deposition, and it has very good properties for material uh, um, and uh, barrier properties. Uh, perylene N actually adheres better to most materials. So if uh, adhesion is actually kind of a problem uh, for some of the applications, move to a perylene N, and most likely you'll get better adhesion. Uh, if you want just crude, fast, cheap uh, perylene deposition, perylene C will pretty much do the job. Uh, gas permeability can be a big issue on some materials, especially elastomers. Uh, if a certain elastomer meets all the dynamic properties that you're looking for, but except the barrier property, a thin deposition of perylene could uh, help that effect. Uh, and some of the... Uh, uh, Barrier differences uh, really relate to the adding a chlorine to that polymer backbone. Uh, chlorine is a big fuzzy atom, and it uh, blocks a lot of uh, other molecules, so it's, uh, it works quite well. 
the melt temperature of the perylene is, all, is quite extraordinary in that even though it's a hydrocarbon, uh, perylene N actually can reach around 400 C. Uh, and most of the other hydrocarbons that are available on the market, like polyethylene and propylene, can't approach that at all. Uh, so you could get a lubricious a surface like ethylene or propylene uh, on uh, a, a material like an epoxy, uh, but it won't decompose like a polyethylene. So we can get the lubricious properties and the high temp properties with this material. Uh, perylene is applied to uh, a whole host of uh, um, devices uh, from the electronics industry. Uh, we have ferrite cores and circuit boards. Uh, from medical devices, it would be stents, pacemakers, um, uh, defibrillators, uh, needles, and sometimes uh, uh, insertable uh, bladders or, or heart valves and whatnot, uh, because it has already been classified as USP class 6, uh, which means it's able to be stuck in your body and left in there for a long time. Uh, the elastomer, elastomer coatings, uh, actually improves, improves lubricity. Uh, Buna rubber, nitrile rubber, uh, silicone a, as an O-ring application actually work quite well, but they do need a, a, a loose lubricant uh, in order to enhance uh, its actuation. Um, in some cases, you can't use uh, a loose lubricant like silicone oil uh, because it'll slough off and move downstream, and that might be a contaminant for the process. If that is the case, definitely use a perylene. It's a dry film lubricant and does not come off. When it comes to uh, high-end aerospace uh, materials, uh, perylene is often used to protect circuitry. Uh, it, it, it'll take an extraordinary condition like the uh, aircraft crashing to totally destroy the perylene coating. So uh, in, in this case, th what they do to prevent uh, electronic components from being corroded from harsh environments, uh, going from uh, an aircraft that is uh, on an aircraft carrier, uh, the salt water could be easily corrode electronics. But when they perylene coat those electronics, it is completely protected uh, from the uh, uh, corrosion of the ocean. Um, and uh, when it comes to uh, certain optics, they need to be protected uh, from oxidation. The perylene could be used in this in this way to to give us a good uh, barrier protection from that. So, uh, to recap, there are essentially three different types of perylene that is used on the market. Perylene N, which is full hydrocarbon. Perylene C, which is a, a slightly chlorinated version. And then there's perylene D, which is a, a double chlorinated perylene. Um, and, uh, for most applications, perylene is used to protect and to uh, lubricate materials. Protection is the primary objective for perylene, protecting glass material, protecting circuitry, protecting metal, uh, uh, cheap polymer, making cheap polymer look expensive uh, for solvent resistance, and, uh, and for lubrication. In many cases, now especially with small devices, they can't afford any bit of contamination. If a material is pluming contaminants, coat it with perylene. If an elastomer uh, is in, a, in an actuating uh, motion and needs a lubricant, use the perylene and it won't, you won't have any loose uh, contaminants. And, uh, and by its nature, because it is full conformal, you can have very extremely thin coatings and still get that property of barrier protection and lubrication. We can, uh, less than a mil, quarter mil thick uh, coatings are, are quite satisfactory for that. Okay, thank you very much for uh, listening to this version of Tech Talk, and uh, hope to see you soon in the, in the next round.